milk is not something that I typically use in my cooking, but it is a very important element in my natural dye practice. Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. We have been exploring soy milk as a tool to do all kinds of things in the world of natural dyeing. And last week, we looked at it as a way to make prints on fiber. This week, I'd like to look at the opposite, if you will, and that is using soy milk in a resist technique that also allows us to make patterns. So let's start grinding some soybeans and see what magic we can make with this incredible plant-based protein. Last year, I was lucky enough to take a class where we looked at all different kinds of surface design techniques with indigo. And at that class, one of the techniques we worked with is a soy lime resist paste. So soy and lime together can create a resistance to dyes on fiber. And what's cool about it is that both of these elements are something that can be used in the kitchen, so they are easily accessible. Now soy, from soybeans, in this instance, is going to be coming from the actual soybean itself. We're gonna be grinding that down into powder, so no milk today. The lime that I'm going to be using is calcium hydroxide. It's used in the world of indigo, but it's also used for pickling. So you can find calcium hydroxide for that purpose and therefore it can be easily found to bring into this technique today. So let's start making this resist paste and making some prints on fiber. A very special point that I need to make about this procedure is that you need to work with your dye source that is cold. This is one reason why it works so well with indigo, because an indigo vat is at room temperature. You will not be able to put this resist paste into a hot pot of dye. So I decided to try it with tea. We worked with tea last week to make prints using soy milk and I saved that tea so that I could use it this week, repurpose it, but also I can use it in a cold state. Now there are several tannin rich dyes that are found in the kitchen and elsewhere that can produce color over time without needing heat and tea is one of those. So it's a great option to test this out. Again, another kitchen food scrap, if you will, and you can get familiar and more comfortable with using this soy lime resist paste. And then when you get into your indigo phase, it'll be another wonderful technique that you can try there as well. This recipe calls for soy powder. I'm sure that you can find soy powder out there. I struggled a little bit in my local grocer. I'm sure I could have found it in a specialty grocer. However, I did a little research and I found a product that is soy hulls that I can then grind at home. Let me show that to you. So you're probably familiar with Bob's Red Mill. It now is in many traditional grocery stores and pretty easy to find. I did some research and found that TVP, which is called textured vegetable protein, is in fact soybeans. And they've taken it through a process to where it's this crunchy state and it is simply soy, which is what I want. Now it is in a 
more pebble-like state. So I'm gonna have to grind that down. And to do that, I'm just going to use a coffee grinder. For the calcium hydroxide or the lime, I'm using a product I purchased from Botanical Color that is used in indigo vat building. However, as I mentioned, calcium hydroxide or pickling lime can also be used. And that is pretty easy to find as well. I don't know if it's more or less expensive than this. Just keep that in mind for other places you might be able to find calcium hydroxide, AKA lime. Now making this paste is easy. It is 20 grams of lime and 20 grams of soy powder. So I'm gonna measure that now. I'll measure the soy bits or the TVP before I grind it and then measure it again when I am at that point that it's powder. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, about 100 milliliters, and that will give me a nice thin paste. We don't want it to be too thick. It's going to have that similar consistency as the soy milk, maybe a tiny bit thicker, and that is because we want it to be able to saturate the fiber to protect it from any natural color coming through. So let's make this paste now, and then we'll start working on our design. Make sure to get all of the lumps out. And as you can see, it is very paste-like. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water. It's definitely not as thin as just the soy milk solution. So we'll make it a little thinner, but it is a paste. So it should have a little bit more body to it. I added about 25 more milliliters of water. So this feels good. This is a sort of gut instinct rather than a absolute. So just work with it and see how it feels good. We'll see when we apply it to the fiber, which is next. So you know the drill about fiber prep. The first thing we're going to do is wash or scour your fiber. And you can do that in the washing machine or you can do it on the stove top with a little bit of pH neutral or gentle dish soap. Cook it on the stove top for 30 minutes or so and then rinse it out. But make sure you have clean fiber. That's super important to allow for the uptake of any dye. Now, in terms of a mordant, when I worked with this with indigo, you don't need a mordant on your fiber. You can choose to have a mordant or not when you're working with tea. If you choose to have a mordant, you may just get darker colors, you may have a little bit longer lasting power, but because tea is so high in tannin, it acts as its own kind of natural mordant. So if you decide you don't want to mordant your fiber in this instance, it's okay, but make sure you wash it. The fiber I'm using has been pre-treated with aluminum acetate, which is a fantastic mineral cell used for cellulose fiber. The fiber I am using is 100% natural cotton. So if you are going to be working with cellulose, that might be an option. You could also treat it with soy milk and you can watch videos here on how to pre-treat 
your fiber with soy milk as a binder. But since we're using tea, high in tannins, if you don't morten your fiber, it's gonna be okay. So to match last week's design, I'm simply going to be using some stenciling sponges, the simple circles, and I'm gonna make another polka dot design. I'm working on maybe making a little grouping of napkins that I can use with that same design and different techniques. You can use stencils, you can freehand, you can use stamps or wooden blocks, anything that you want to apply this paste. I'm going to be applying it to a fiber that has been ironed because you want a nice flat surface and I'm going to put it on my printing pad that I made. You can watch last week about how I made it but it's a pretty simple process of using some stiffer foam covering it with canvas and then another piece of fiber to protect it. This allows me to then stretch and pin my fiber so that it won't move while I'm applying the paste. If you do not want to make a printing pad, you can simply stretch and tape your fiber to the surface like your countertop. You just don't want it to move around. Just know that stretching and attaching your fiber is just gonna make your whole application process smoother. So let's get that fiber ready to go and start making some polka dots. All right, there's the application. It is a bit thicker than I wanted it to be, but we'll see what happens. We definitely want it to fully dry, so I will let this sit overnight. It will start to crack probably because it's so thick. I don't recall how thick it was when I worked with it with indigo, but this feels a little thicker. So feel free to stir it often and add a little bit of water if you want it to be a little bit thinner. I also found that these sponges needed to have a little bit of help of spreading it more evenly across the sponge. It tended to pull up in one spot, so I would just move it around and dab it back on here and use a spoon, as you saw, to smooth things out on the surface over there, just to try to make it even. So it was tricky, not as easy as I recall. However, you know, you gotta test these things out and see what happens. So we'll let that fully dry over there, and then we will put it into our cold tea bath. All right. I let this dry overnight and you can see it started to crack, but it is good and dry. I do feel like that was maybe a little too thick, but we'll find out now. We'll be putting it into the cold 
tea that I had made from last week's video because we do have to have this go into a cold dye and we'll see what happens. Definitely have some interesting things going on, unexpected to say the least. I was a bit concerned about the consistency of the paste itself, that it was a little too thick. So it's been sitting in the cold tea for about three or four hours. The color of the fiber itself is very different than the fiber that I dyed last week in the hot tea. It is the exhaust, so it's going to be a lighter and slightly different color, but this is much more golden in color. So I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out now and start removing the paste. Now, often with soy lime resist, you're going to have to put it into a diluted vinegar bath to help remove the paste itself. It becomes almost like a cement. That is not happening with mine, which leads me to believe that there is a difference in the paste that I made and that it's not exactly what I've worked with in the past. This is the first time I've made it myself. So probably that's one of the reasons why I've had some difficulty at hearing it or that it was too thick. I'm guessing that some combination isn't quite right. Maybe using the TVP was still too granulated even after I ground it up even more. Maybe you really need some almost like flour consistency of your soy. Doesn't matter. The result is still going to be interesting and different than expected, but that's also how you learn. So let me start rinsing off the paste and we'll set this out to dry and then we can take a look at it. So that was from me using my fingers to remove the soy lime paste and so you can see there's the cement like quality ripping the skin. So definitely using a diluted vinegar bath and soaking your fiber in it will remove any residual paste. Don't do this because it hurts. All right, here's the final result. Super interesting. It is not what I thought might happen. I was thinking that we would get stronger white sections where the paste resisted, but you can see that it does have white areas. What I do love, however, is that the dark area around the place where we put the paste, and I know that that has to do with the soy. So that is the soy acting as a binder on the edge, and this being the resist of the paste. So it's varied, and I really actually love the way it turned out. So unique, everyone looks different. Now you will have two sides to this. So this is the side that I actually had the paste on. Let me show you the other side. So the other side is darker. You can still see the white spots where it really did resist, but it also took some of the dye. So it is super varied, and I love that you have two choices. I really like this side. I think this side looks like moons. <laughs> so pretty. I want to show you it next to the piece that I did last week, this was dyed with hot tea, black tea, and these pieces were done with the soy milk, just painting soy milk onto 
make these dots and you can see the difference in color between the hot tea and then what I used which was cold the exhaust from this so this has this kind of yellowish quality to it but I think they look really cool together as well look at how much variation you can get from these two different processes I am telling you there is never a dull moment in the world of natural color this was equally as challenging and equally as surprising and although it was different than what I experienced when I used this soy lime paste with an indigo vat in fact I really enjoyed the difference and that sort of modeled some areas resisting more than others now of course I could play around with the recipe as I mentioned I could look at using more flour based soy as opposed to the particles of TVP and I will try again but I'm pretty darn happy with it everything is a nothing venture nothing gain scenario here so I hope that you will give this a try and let me know how it works for you now next week on color quest we have one more soy based project and that is looking at using soy as the binder for earth pigments i'd like to continue making prints on this cotton fiber and seeing what we can do by inviting the colors that are found beneath our feet in the dirt itself and that is with earth pigments so have a great week i hope you get to try some of these things out and i can't wait to see you next friday here on color quest let's get so let's start grinding some soybeans and see what and see what and see so 